Have you ever seen a gaming mouse so unique that it doesn't look like a gaming mouse at all? Well, that's exactly what I thought about the upcoming MTech Levy gaming mouse. MTech is a new local brand here in the Philippines, and their first offering is the Levy gaming mouse. The Levy gaming mouse features a design and shape that veers away from the typical clones and similarly designed gaming mice out in the market, with a shape that was specifically made to tailor with dense scorpion grip, which the people behind the brand use. It is also fairly lightweight at around 65 grams and uses a flawless PixArt PMW3370 sensor. Right, let me share with you everything you need to know about the new MTech Levy Gaming Mouse. So let's get into it. For a new brand, the packaging is actually pretty clean with just an image preview and model name in front and the specifications at the back. Upon opening the box, we have some stickers and the user manual. Then we have the MTech Levy Mouse itself. We also have a small accessory box that houses the paracord cable with gold-plated plugs and has a ferrite choke as well. At first look and touch, as you can tell, this doesn't look like a gaming mouse at all. I can even describe its shape other than being a symmetrical one. It doesn't have perforations, RGB lighting, or even a logo, which is kinda nice in its own way. It also has this smooth but with a little bit of textured finish. Now, the main mouse buttons, as expected for a mouse with KLGM 8.0, is really fast and crispy. I also appreciate the almost unibody design, making the buttons fairly stable. Now, the scroll wheel doesn't wobble and has a good amount of strong tactile feedback, but is probably one of the most annoying ones that I've tried sound-wise. It makes these weird loud squeaking sounds that I just can't stand when using this for productivity. The side buttons feature a low-profile form factor that is barely visible from the top, which is a nice touch, and has a good amount of click and tactile feedback. They are also easy to reach without the need to adjust your grip. Here's a quick sound test for you guys. Now, looking here on the left side, you'll get an idea about its shape, and as you can see, the height and bump are relatively short. It also has a deep groove for your thumb to comfortably sit. Now, flipping it at the back, you'll see that the shape is really unorthodox to say the least, with a flat top, rounded top corners, and a completely flat base. We'll talk more about this when we discuss its shape and comfort, but looking at the right side, we pretty much have the same design, just without the extra buttons. Now, flipping it in front, you'll get a better understanding of its overall shape, with a fairly normal height for the primary buttons. And lastly, turning it all over at the bottom, we have the PixArt PMW3370 sensor, the DPI adjustment button with a small LED indicator beside it, the power switch, the 2.4GHz USB dongle tucked inside this compartment, and four PTFE gliders. As per my own measurement, the MTech Levy weighs roughly around 62.6 grams, which is even lighter than its specified weight of 65 grams. Now let's talk about its design, construction, and shape. It's definitely unique and interesting, and it took me just a few games to adjust when it comes to its shape, but I noticed that my pinky finger frequently gets pinched by the sharp and flat bottom edge of the side of the mouse. Most if not all of my gaming mouse has a curved bottom, so I didn't have this issue before. I tried to adjust my pinky finger, but since I'm used to having it near the bottom, it really makes the experience less than ideal. It might just be my weird pinky finger placement though, so your mileage may definitely vary. Now, the shape was designed supposedly to follow the 10 scorpion grip, so take that into consideration. Not everyone follows that grip style, but generally speaking, this is still pretty good for most grip styles depending on the size of your hand. Palm grip users can also take advantage of this, but the rather short height might be bothersome for those who want to completely hug their mouse. Fingertip and claw grip users shouldn't have any issues with this. Other than that, I have no further complaints about the shape. It is small enough that it is quite perfect for the size of my hand and the bump is small enough to not get in the way while providing enough support for my palm. Now in terms of construction, it is decently built and good enough to pass for production with a tight and robust construction without any squeaking or rattling sounds. The surface texture is also very nice to the hand as I've pointed out earlier. 
Overall, in terms of design and construction, as you can tell, it looks more like a compact productivity mouse rather than the typical modern lightweight gaming mouse. It's quite minimal too, without any RGB lighting, logo, or the usual perforated design, while still being lightweight, which is nice. By the way, here's the user manual, just in case you want to take a screenshot of it. You can also choose to use this in wired mode, especially if you run out of battery, and the paracord cable is lightweight and flexible enough to not get in the way. Now, another aspect that's worth noting is the placement of the DPI adjustment button. Like I said in my review of the Fantec Aria XD7, I prefer the DPI button to be placed on top, maybe beside the small LED indicator, rather than at the bottom for quick access. Although, like I said on that video, I don't adjust DPI on the fly, but others might, so yeah. Now, the weight balance is leaning more towards the front side, which may be bothersome for some users, but personally, I didn't find it too annoying. Now, performance is something you need not worry about this gaming mouse. With a non-reliable sensor in the form of the PMW3370 sensor, it is definitely accurate and reliable, partnered with up to 1000Hz polling rate. And other than my issue with the flat base pinching my pinky finger, I don't have any other major complaints about this gaming mouse, and I was able to adjust to this playing in Valorant in just a few matches. Now, using the mouse tester software by Micro, as you can see, the PMW3370 sensor didn't lose track even at 4 meters per second speed. And at normal speed doing quick flicks, it maintained a consistent tracking performance as well. Now, doing a constant diagonal movement, as you can see, there's no significant jittering, and the polling rates from 125Hz to 1000Hz for the most part is consistent as well. So yeah, no issues whatsoever when it comes to sensor performance. And lastly, in terms of software, thankfully it already has one. And while it's pretty basic, at least you'll get the option to customize the functions of the buttons, adjust polling rate, DPI values in increments of 50, and the colors of each stage, adjust standard mouse parameters, and record macros. Unfortunately, we don't have an option to adjust the lift of distance and the bounce time, which other budget gaming mouse have. So to conclude, first, unfortunately, at least for the time being, my international viewers won't be able to get this as this will only be available here in the Philippines. But in terms of my overall verdict, except for my issue with the flat base of this mouse, I feel like this is a decent option for those who are looking for something new, especially if you're one of those who prefer the scorpion grip that the shape of this mouse is intended to. I wish Mtech can still fix the flat base and fix the quality of the scroll wheel and maybe add more features to the software. Other than that, this unique gaming mouse is good to go. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Huge thanks to Mtech for allowing me to borrow this and share all my thoughts with them for possible improvements and to you guys for something to look forward to. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Have a great day guys, you're awesome.